Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. I've got coffee in hand. It's 6.30 in the morning, uh, and we are reacting to Inside Star Citizen Masters and Blasters. So this is about Master Modes. Uh, you guys know this channel. We were pretty heavily into the design of Master Modes and dissect it pretty often. Um, where we are currently is that the group fights are very good, very interesting. Um, and it's the problem with the live flight model when it comes to group fights and master modes is for the most part fixed. So, uh, but the issue, uh, the complaint a lot of people are having is that in the 1v1 face to face scenarios, if you were to split up the master modes experience, the 1v1s, then the group gameplay side is most of the complaints or the, um, heavy criticism is the face-to-face -face fighting aspect which is actually the most complex to the design designing the group fights is easy right you slow down the ceilings you create some unique archetypes you know which is different flight traits and then you see how they interact with each other uh but when you get face-to-face -face fights then you're pushing the ceiling of what's capable uh, and really pushing the flight model to the limits so if you ask me where we're at group gameplay is great 1v1s need a lot of work they need more variation um and they need to smooth the aiming experience because as you saw from my video yesterday there's a lot of wiggling a lot of pointless movement really hard to push people uh stuff like that Anyways, enough rambling. Let's, uh, let's get into it. While Star Citizen aims to offer a first-person universe of possibilities, at the center of it has always been you and your spaceship. And over the years of development, testing, feedback, and iteration, there have been many changes to the combat and traversal experience. And in the upcoming Alpha 323, the biggest and most anticipated of those makes their presence known with the arrival of Master Modes. And with that, comes additional changes to precision targeting, weapon balance, gimbal use, and more. The precision targeting. Yeah. Gosh. Which, that's going to be interesting. I've completely even forgotten about that. I didn't think it looked good, but let's see. What are our instruments? So Master Modes is a way for us to really kind of capitalize on what the ships are. Basically, Master Modes are a new game feature that uh, change all the combat experience inside the, inside the game. So you have a mode for fighting in and a mode for flying from place to place then. A rework of the flight and combat system to essentially try and solve a lot of the problems that players have had with the flight experience. You can decide if you want to be in full combat mode or you're, you're just in transit or you want to get out of a situation as quick as possible. Fire. Master mode. They got a bigger team now. Ooh. It's the thing that makes ship combat exciting and making sure that the There's our boy, there's our boy. Ships that you have in the game perform in the roles that we have envisioned for them. Damn, that's a cool angle. Since uh, Citizen Con, we've been bringing Master Modes into Arena Commander. Progress has been quite good, showing off the new modes and letting people get their hands on it. Collecting the feedback, seeing how players respond to that online by monitoring how players react on social channels. Uh, we've been testing internally a lot. It's a very limited selection of ships, but even so, people seem to like it. So we've taken that feedback and carried on making progress and adapting it all to the rest of the ships as well. We've been watching how players play the game, monitoring analytics, putting it all together and sharing it with the devs who need to see it. How the hell do you go about converting 200 ships to this? Unfortunately, there's only really one way to do it, and uh, that's to not get too intimidated by the number. A team effort. Will, the video uh, freezes. It, really. The difficult part, of course, especially as a designer, is try to uh, understand the new uh, game dynamics that uh, the, the game system creates, especially in an environment like the PU. 
and then try to be able to deliver the proper game experience for every ship with a, you know, a different tuning. And that's quite difficult, but that's also what uh, is really interesting about bringing up a new feature. So we're moving each individual ship into an archetype and we're going to rebalance that ship to the archetype as a starting point. And then basically once that's complete, we're going to add the individuality into each ship. Each yeah, so it's like they break, you know, all the ships into certain groups and then they start to deviate from what those groups are when it comes to personalities. Yeah, like I don't mind this. I think it's a great approach because it makes ships useful. Um, given like some are counted by the others, bit of scissors, paper, rock kind of stuff to it. Uh, yeah, I'm supportive of this for sure. I definitely like the idea of the archetypes. But I think the issue uh, is the light fighter archetype. Like with the light fighter archetype, you're talking about the highest skill ceiling, the most maneuverability. So what that looks like is extremely important uh and i think that that's kind of where they're falling behind the rest of the mechanics the the spool up and stuff i love that i love it all uh, i think they've done a really good job uh but it's the weapons and the maneuverability in the light fighter which is the high skill ceiling that's uh that's where we need the work Shit has been given a full refresh and we've we've looked at every ship in the game assigned them a base archetype so that you know what you're getting into from from the get-go i'll tell you what too after doing like a hundred squad battles uh the hammerhead kind of almost gets avoided i think the weapon ranges are actually an issue for more than just the reasons i mentioned in one of my earlier videos last month or earlier this month but uh players just don't go within 2k of it <laughs> and then you don't really take damage if you can stay away at 2k range so if they were to reduce the range on guns uh for our ships like the live fighters mediums heavies then we would have to get closer to the hammerhead. Then it would be terrifying. It would actually probably be too overpowered. But with that being said, uh, right now, the hammerheads are just defeated with endurance and distance. So. All ships, based on how but it's great that they're good. Purpose they serve, will get an archetype type assigned to them. A typical archetype is a snap fighter. I would really love if they just deleted snub fighters from the game. They're so small, the networking struggles to keep up, uh, the game deteriorates when the ship's that size. I'd love for them to be deleted, just gotten rid of, but can't have that. Um, and it's unrealistic. But snub fighters are forever going to be an issue when it comes to the game and game performance. Under stress, they just become more and more powerful. Very, very small, very agile, but it cannot dish out a lot of damage and it can also not receive a lot of damage before it pops. And they did some great balancing in master modes with the stump fighters. Yeah, almost their hole going almost immediately red after they start to soak some damage. So um, I'm glad that they recognize uh, that these things need to be extremely fragile. Otherwise, the imbalance is insane. Light fighter. Very maneuverable, decent weapon loadout, and it's basically there for agility engagements. Agility gauge engagements in a brawl, though, right? Like, because, you know, jousting, which is like the coming ins and the going outs, the hit and runs, that's where the buccaneer shines, but the gladius is there to stay in the fight, it's there to use its agility and brawl its way out. But it's not going to. Uh, overcome, you know, like that hit and run gameplay style like the Interceptor class does, which they're going to mention. So that's why the design of the light fighter is like so much more important almost because it's the most sophisticated and uses the most of the flight model. So when you see people giving criticism to masterminds, understand that for the most part, they're referring to the light fighter. 
uh, because that's where you're stretching it. That's where duels are happening. Like the way I like to think of it, like the light fighter class is the brawler uh, with agility, right? It's a dueling class. It's a 1v1 class. It's there to stretch the limits, you know, and really, you know, push for angles and stuff. Whereas the medium fighter, for example, is just almost like a defensive with guns play style. And then the heavy is like heavy guns, heavy defense, uh, and then like multi-purpose. So it's important to look at it like that. Like the light fighter is a dueling class. The ships that are going to fit into that archetype are dueling classes, but which is why they're going to overcome and over position medium fighters. It's not supposed to be free or easy, but you know, there's lack of purpose elsewhere that the light fighter is losing by having little guns, stuff like that. At least that's the way I see it. Medium fighter. Warning. Pretty agile for its size, but it has a lot more offensive firepower. Target destroyed. Yep. Heavy fighter. They don't maneuver well, but when you happen to be at the front of them, you can die very, very fast. Now these are tuning archetypes. The Vanguard smokes people in atmosphere right now uh, because the maneuverability comes down and so its maneuverability and capacity in comparison comes up. So, yeah, I'm a huge fan of this stuff. I think the archetype stuff they really nailed. ...that we have for our fighter ships class and all ships in that size will be assigned to one of these things. However, based on the ship and what the purpose of the ship is, we have variations of that. For example, we have the interceptor variant of these tunings. This is a tuning variation that can apply to any of these archetypes. And here's a concern with the interceptor one, is that the hit and run gameplay is so powerful, so strong in it, that in group settings, these things run rampant. You know, like if I go into a light fighter, by the end of the 15 minute lobby, I might have three deaths. Uh, in the interceptor class, it's very easy to have zero. Uh, so I just worry that when master modes hits, people are going to go straight to this class to try to recreate the running away in live, the lack of risk to pushing into these engagements are using this. I hope that's not the case, but I think it's important. We need to see these in the PU for we can go hitting them with the nerf bat. But this archetype, extremely powerful extremely irritating the fight against too. An interceptor tuning for a ship means that this ship exchanges the agility. Um, with agility, we mean the rotation rate and the lateral yep. strafing accelerations. The dueling ability. Speed. So they will not yep. be able to turn their velocity vector much. They will not be able to rotate much, but they will be very, very fast just going forward. Yep. So we're expecting like the Talon to be in that class, I think. Uh, maybe one of the origin series. Racing ships are like the base archetype that almost all racers ended up with so far are interceptors because racers prefer speed over everything else. But you want to pick the right racer for the right track. The other end of the range are our, let's call them fighter bomber tunings. Does that mean that the Fury is supposed to be an interceptor? That means we trade agility for simply durability. Yep. On top of the fighters, we just keep going with this. We have gunboats for ships that are constellation sized. I love the gunboats now. For something like a, a hammerhead, right? So our, our hammerhead is for us is our anti-fighter corvette. And it is extremely anti-fighter right now. The only issue is, is it's so anti-air fighter that you don't go near the bubble. There's a bubble of about, it's like 1.7k. If you get within that, expect to die rapidly quick uh but if you stay out of that you can play relatively uh without as much risk because the ability for it to shoot at you at 1.7 diminishes quite heavily um so the issue is it's kind of like a area control right now rather than a big threat uh specifically in space i'm referring to the lethality of it increases in atmosphere but I think they need to 
look at this a bit because the hammerhead's incredibly powerful up close, but at a distance, it's a kitten. Uh, but then I worry, right? Like if you reduce the weapon ranges to 1.7k and so we're all having to fight this hammerhead and get close to it, then we're going to start getting owned the second we try to engage. So uh, I think there needs to be some careful tuning with the range effectiveness of the turrets and uh, what range can these be engaged at. But the hammerhead is formidable, certainly, but it's also easily avoidable. So that's the issue. Um, curious where they want to go with it. Let's see. Frigates Significant improvement the though. The players can control in the universe right now. So we're talking Idris, we're talking 890 jumps. I know that Idris players cannot control the Idris, but we're talking uh, ships like the Carrack. Those are frigates. Really, Wait, really what big. Did they, what did they say about the universe right now? So we're talking Idris, we're talking 890 jumps. I know that Idris players cannot control the Idris, but we're talking uh, ships like the Carrack. Those are frigates, really, really big ones, but also they will have variations in their tuning based on the brand or what the purpose of the ship. Oh man, didn't they mention that they're getting close to finishing up a frigate too? So that would be like what the Perseus? Oh man. I tell you what, boys, little side distraction here. I really like the Perseus. You asked me what the coolest ship in the game is going to be, or it looks like so far. The Perseus looks amazing. Really cool. So these are very big changes that are coming, but the main takeaway is that these archetypes are just reference frames for the type of tuning you want to give a ship. Yep. It does not mean that every ship good, that good. you have in the verse will fit a, a specific archetype. There are ships which are in between. For example, the Zaber. Oh, my boy. I, dude. God. I want to cry. The glory days of the Saber. Oh man, back in 3-4 when this thing was king. And ever since has been a complete joke. To be honest, to be completely honest, guys. Failings. Uh, by the developers. This thing has been useless for so long. Uh, and they really need to restore it to some form of glory. It needs to be good at something. Because it's not good at anything. And it's been too long. Too long. Bring this baby back. I made a thread on Spectrum. Look at my post history. Well, a single thread asking them to bring the Sabre back to any sort of usefulness. And it got ignored. But I hope they really find this, this boy's place. Because uh, we all miss it. We all dearly miss it. For a light fighter, it's somewhere in between. The Cutlass has not the durability of a heavy fighter, has, however, the turret of a heavy fighter, so it's somewhere in between. So there are ships which do not fit yep. exactly into these frames. But this is the beauty of it, because these ships yep. Good. can make them fit Good. anywhere where they want. We just need to make sure that the balance between them is right. Not everything fits in a box, and it would be very boring if it did. I don't like the precision mode. I don't mind if it's PvE, but like... And I guess that's why they're attached and kind of not listening to... or well not listening, but not reacting to complaints about the weapon ranges. I think is because this mode is supposed to be... Um, a significant mechanic when it comes to master modes and the aiming experience is this zoom in mechanic that we haven't seen or tested. We've seen it, but not tested it yet. I think this is why they're holding on to the weapon ranges, but I gotta say, I don't think this looks good. Like I worry about this specifically. Precision targeting is a new way of- Maybe it's just a PVE thing? Of aiming at specific parts of a ship. You get the zoomed in picture of your targets and it allows you to paint over specific components of the ship. So if you want to take out the thrusters, you simply aim towards the thrusters. I mean, this is good for boarding and sure stuff, right? Piracy? Exactly where you're aiming. It's a big rework of the entire target system with the goal to make it not only fit master modes, but also fit the problems we've had with target in the past, which is to control the weapons and the accuracy. Yeah, maybe I've been wrong about it, but um, I guess we just have to see how it pays out. I'm just trying to... Sorry, plays out. I'm just trying to think of how this would perform under pressure, right? Like, 
in a sweaty large group setting how does this mechanic perform out of pressure or maybe that's not even the design goal with it maybe the design goal with it is strictly to you know control a, a ship that's been distorted or like emp'd or something like that maybe the ship is already disabled to a degree and then you're trying to pick apart its lethality or isolate components stuff like that but or maybe this is when you're fighting ships of a large scale but in a sweaty group fight like a 20v20 of some sorts or around those numbers it'd be uh, i'd be very interested in seeing how this performs under pressure in that kind of a scenario right so since master modes is bringing everything closer together and master modes is slowing everything down we need to make sure that the weapon speeds are adjusted as well it will reduce your fire rate it will therefore decrease the spread and allow you to be more precise where you hit. Good examples for that is if you want to fire at a ship from very far away and you want to make sure that your shots hit. An even better example is if you have a light fighter and you want to help take down a larger ship. You will not be able to take down the ship by yourself, but you can help other players by crippling the turrets with ballistic cannons, for example, and other subsystems. So that allows you to see better what you're currently targeting. What we're doing is we're bringing all weapons into three archetypes. We have the anti-fighter weapons that have higher fire rate and a higher velocity that allows you to hit targets such as a horde of gladiuses. And then we have the anti-material weapons. Anti-material weapons is the one you bring out when you and your friends want to hunt a hammerhead. It's got the highest damage of all the weapons. You want to deal as much damage as possible but the target is big and it moves slow, so you don't have to worry as much about actually hitting the target. And then we have unspecialized weapons, which are in between the anti-fighters and the anti-materials. So this is better because it gives you a lot of- Yo, Did he just dumb fire the missiles? Yo, props to the media team, sheesh. Options to how you want to attack the target. You can just, you know, spray and pray that your shots are going to hit. Or you can go into the precision targeting mode, see all the sub-targets that you have available, and then pick out which of these sub-targets you actually want to attack. I just want to mention one two thing too. The, like, cannon gameplay, which they've kind of moved to, this is how you punch above your weight. So you go to cannons if you want to fight ships of a higher class or a heavier class. I don't necessarily agree that cannons should be isolated in this gameplay. Because the thing is some of the most dopamine you can get from playing star citizen is using cannons we haven't had it in so long but look at like how much i outcry there was when the ion got nerfed and wasn't able to shoot at light fighters anymore it's incredibly rewarding and fun and full of dopamine when you create that hard to aim extremely difficult but once you master it you can get really good at it uh kind of sniper gameplay like people go into like call of duty warzone stuff like that they want to play a sniper class you know which is where it's under pressure you're going to be in a lot of trouble but if you can land that hit then that's great the issue is they keep they seem to uh be sticking to this cannons are only for fighting at larger targets i'm not I don't think that's a good idea guys i think there's so much dopamine that you could balance cannons into light fighter gameplay like the interceptor classes stuff like that and uh have a lot of fun is it a careful balancing act yeah it is like it's difficult to balance but the reward is dopamine like crazy so i just hope that with masterminds maybe they're not just gonna stick to that maybe there's actually gonna be Cannons for fighter vs fighter gameplay. Next to basically seeing what you're actually hitting, you also just because cannons have been dead. They've been dead for years now. All these cannons you can buy at all the stores, all the stations. No one buys them. Nobody. The stunning view of that big ship that you're targeting, right? Like it's 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 a full screen zoomed in view on your target. You can see it in all its like glory. You can see all the parts you can shoot off. I think it's great. 
we've been really happy with the results so far. Cool. We've seen a massive yeah, maybe it'll be all right. The way combat works and what the players are actually doing within combat. And that's been really good to see. There's still some small things we're working on right now to kind of solve, but we're really happy, you know, we're kind of most of the way there at the moment. The next big thing that the new aiming system has is the removal of the so-called N-1 system. That means that when you have a gimbal attached to it, <coughs> the weapon attached to the gimbal goes down one size. At this point in time, after like lots of testing, we're pretty confident that we don't want the system anymore. Yep. So in the future, if you have a size 3 gimbal on your ship, it will carry a size 3 weapon. But we're actually going further with this because from 3 to, to 3 onwards, you will not be able to mount fixed guns on your ship anymore. In addition to that, all the turrets, yep. however, will get gimbals. So this is a requirement because of precision aiming mode, because the precision aiming mode we also want to be able to use on turrets, and we need a way to make the bullets fly where we want them to fly without cheating. So this means all turrets, they will get gimbals on their guns so they can properly lead, but to still keep Yeah, I don't feel any particular way about this. I'm cool with it. weapon employing capabilities, and also because tur turrets cannot just, you know, jump on the way out of the way, the auto gimbal mode will be something that's exclusively available to turrets. So pilots will still be able to manually gimbal their weapons with, you know, either tying it to their controls or by looking around but only turrets will be able to use the auto gimbal system because there's like turrets are supposed to be very very dangerous and so players just yeah. have the choice how to apply the damage the best however great logic auto is also in in assisted mode it will come with a reduction in fire rate just to keep things things fair yeah i love that go for it very cool I uh, completely supportive of that i think um it also allows the game to perform better uh, and stuff like that i do worry about the usefulness of like gimbals right like i'm not talking about auto gimbal i'm talking about gimbling the guns entirely like you, you don't want you know just mouse auto tracking gameplay but um no like i completely support that sure no issues So the uh, feedback, it has been going pretty well. We've been really happy with working with the community who's been playing this to kind of fine tune it and make the changes needed. And we have made a lot of changes. Important note, Yogi, Winter have been, and maybe a couple of devs on the spectrum have been active with the community. Uh, it's mainly Yogi, man. Like Yogi is doing so much community outreach, it's insane. So bravo to him. Based upon these feedback. Most of the feedback that we've been getting has been pretty positive around Squadron Battle, where yep. there's some pretty good group combat dynamics. Players are reporting positively yep. on Bravo. some really cool gameplay emerging. They did great. They did great with this. Like, the group squad stuff, they deserve their props. It's so much better. It's so much better. Is it finished and perfect? No, but it doesn't need to be. It's so much better than live. Good job, guys. For sure. Which is how players evade now is quite different. You have to drop chaff, break your target lock, break away, and like find your opportunities yep, love to this. break away from your, your pursuing ship. What we can see at the moment is that players are very happy with squadron battles. Yes. Players are not very happy with the one we won, so this is more an area where we have to improve. Yeah, really cool. Good stuff, Yogi. And it's very true, like that's, because again i said this at the beginning of the video so this is great that they recognize that right too is that the flight model is going to get it stretched to the most limits in these 1v1 scenarios being good at a group in a group setting is relatively easy you can rely on your archetype class you're not pushed to extreme limits a defensive play style inside of a group setting is to retreat in a 1v1 setting you need to evade. You need to use your turn rate to the max. You need to push your capa empty your capacitor by the end of the fight. By the end of the fight, your boost should be empty, stuff like this. So you are pushing the design to the limits. Um, and it's good that they recognize this, but it's important too that we give them the feedback that, hey, the squads are incredible. They're, they really are, uh, but it's the 1v1s that are the issue. Um, and if they are self-recognizing of that, awesome. Then we're all on the same page. Perfect. And uh, we'll find that. We'll get there. No rush. Of course, there are some very detailed feedbacks about uh, some tuning choices, how we should make some type of archetypes better rather than not. But in general, this is going to be mostly appreciated. The players are really enjoying the different roles that we've got. The interceptors are quite successful. There's been some pretty good feedback around the Buccaneer. We've 
probably still got a little bit of work to do around the light fire class and yep yep which is like the dueling right the high skill dueling you're gonna go if you're gonna have like tournaments in star citizen guess what they're gonna be in maybe medium fighters but specifically light fighters we could push these thing to the limits so yeah they're right the most work needs to be done in the light fighter but they're doing they're making really good progress and they're not afraid to try different things each iteration the light fighter is going through so much changes and was people are kind of seeing what sticks uh really cool really cool 1v1s but other than that it's been pretty good mm -hmm. you can you can stay closer you are much more in control of staying in a closer formation with yep. with other people that you're playing with when we do our, our regular play tests we can actually fly in our own version of a formation yep and we can track targets without being several kilometers off each other yep that's your version of a formation our version of a formation is generally if we can see each other still and and we're not accidentally shooting each other i'd, I'd consider that a good formation <laughs> i'm not sure that's the textbook definition of formation <laughs> I can see you in that crash in you. That's my formation, Josh. It's, it's, it's a win if at least two of... of uh, you can do this, yeah. It it's 100% a thing. Without any friendly fire incidents. Um, you definitely can fly in formations now. Like, yeah, the fighting's really up close so in the squadron sitting. The thing sitting. excites me the most about Master Modes is if you just watch the footage of players dogfighting at the minute, you can really see how yep. close all of those ships are. Yeah, it just feels so much more cinematic. It's really about the foundation of the f of the whole flight experience moving forward. Because I fully understand that this isn't a game just about combat. We want to communicate that players who want to do combat, they'll go into the master mode for combat. But if you want to go from A to B, you've now got a mode where you can do that without being harassed as much. <laughs> so that's going to be a big plus for the game. It's leveling the playing field a little Wait, bit more now. Wait, what? Combat, we want to communicate that players who want to do combat, they'll go into the master mode for combat. But if you want to go from A to B, you've now got a mode where you can do that without being harassed as much. So, uh, uh, so <laughs> uh, am, am I understanding this right? Are they saying that because combat players are gonna be in master modes, now that the non-combat players are just going to be in nav mode able to easily avoid combat is that is that what i'm understanding that's like really concerning and this is like i made an issue uh video about this last month this is my concern right is if players are flying around in nav mode for free at like 1200 ceilings does that just mean they aren't engageable you can't they're not easily pulled out how do we stop that how do you catch uh, a bounty that's flying around at 1200? How do you pirate a hauler that's flying around at 1200? Um, and missiles, yeah, they work, guys, but they're not going to pull the ship out of nav. Like, they might bang it up a bit, uh, but the larger it is, the more of an issue the missiles are not. So how are we pulling these things out? How does a master modes SCM mode player like that's in that mode engage a player in nav you know how does the predator catch the prey in any scenario like how does a security NPC catch a pirate if they're at 1200 this is a huge concern of mine and why I'm desperate to see this in the PU I hope they aren't just saying that now with master modes you get to elect for combat and that's it that's going to be a big plus for the game it's leveling the playing field a little bit more now as we slowly breathe more life into each one of these ships you're going to know the ship by the back of your hand people seem to like uh, how much more frantic and intimate all the fights are in the arena commander testing that we've done so far and i'm looking forward to hearing people's thoughts once we've rolled it out across all the ships not everything that isn't three to three you can see already in the master mode, AC mode. It's um, there's a lot more stuff coming, especially to weapon treatment, how we use capacitors, etc. But overall, based on the feedback that we got so far, and also from increasing player numbers, we're pretty confident that we're on the right track. So master mode yep. and the gunnery system and the whole combat experience is a huge undertaking for us, and we cannot do it without you. So we want you to play it. We need your feedback. Be honest, tell us what you don't like, 
please also tell, tell us what you like um, so we can make all this yep. space combat game great together. So what we learned this week, what we Ooh. learned that with master modes comes a rebalancing of ship performance into dedicated archetypes. That these archetypes are simply where tuning start and will be grown from to ensure that each ship yep. and vehicle provides a unique experience going forward. And that precision targeting, weapon gimbal, and balance changes all combine with master modes to provide a more involved, visceral combat experience for pilots when they arrive in the upcoming Alpha 323. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, like Yogi said, right? The experience needs in one v ones needs to get better. Uh, right now, like you saw the video guys I released yesterday, a lot of wiggling, not a lot of up close fighting, unless like the player you're going after is extremely uh, unrehearsed or unfamiliar. Uh, so kind of the meta to the one v ones is really poor right now, but they'll fix that up. It sounds like they're already planning to so. Got confidence we'll eventually get there uh, after just some time and a lot of feedback and a lot of feedback loops. But 1v1 experience definitely needs to increase. Uh, and the squad experience is amazing. Um, my few critique spots are just like, what's the plan with the hammerhead? Because at the moment, it's kind of just area denial. Uh, what are we envisioning with the light fighter 1v1s? Like, is it jujitsu? Jiu wrestling you know which is what we want for position or is it just like this mid to long range wiggling shooting um how do we plan on combating the wiggling issue that's ever prevalent now um you know is is that a weapon change that we need to do a maneuverability change we need to do are the lateral strafes too high uh not sure make sure you guys Join the uh, Shadow Moses Discord. There is so much intelligent discussion in there uh, with players that are really testing it. Uh, so make sure you read it, read into that. Uh, there's some great discussion. The devs participate in it too. So very cool, guys. Very cool. Liked this week episode. Great to see the guys again, Yogi and all that. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, I will catch you guys in the next video, yeah? GG's. GG's.